the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morcilla. Woo for the win in Canada. Darren Woo! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champions. Yo, Canada and the rest of the world, you're listening to the Hakane Podcast. We're back in full strength once again. It's another week of the dual co-hosts. And uh, so I'm Theo Juan, living in Kingston, Ontario, from the best city in the world, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And I'm Danny Proby from Vancouver, BC, and we are your Coast to Coast Guide. All things Canadian Ultimate. We have another like mega super duper preview recap extravaganza episode. I think this is just like summer ultimate now we're just kind of in the full swing of things so theo how was your weekend were you playing ultimate i was in uh, the capital city of our great country playing frisbee uh fun fact for for the the friends at home here uh first nationals that i qualified for last week since 2016 uh first time ever i actually technically qualified if that makes sense because the years that i have played it's like you auto qualified back then so like there was just you know, so many open teams I want to go. There was enough. You just went. So that is a fun fact for you, for your trivia. And then uh, this past weekend I played in, I think I'm going to have to ask people I used to play with, but pretty sure this is my first ever club final. Like, I don't think I've ever been in the finals at a club tournament. Like maybe like a, like a fun fall tournament. I think I won like a fun, like harvest or something or, or some other Oktoberfest or something in Kitchener, Waterloo, but like first club tournament final it was pretty cool. How did it feel? Were you extra nervous? Did it feel different? Um, it didn't feel too different because most of the like the crowd or like people that were watching like had left because the open final happened first. So there was definitely more people watching the open final. And then the women's final happened after that, which was during our semifinal. And then the final, there was like a big shout out to the people at Red Circus because they were still there watching and they were cheering on one of my teammates, Han, who's from uh, there and played with Circus for years. So uh, they were getting involved in the cheers and stuff, so that was fun. Um, we'll say that I um, got to kick spike it in the final, so I will always hold on to that. Uh, though the result didn't go our way, um, kick spiking in the final was kind of cool. So um, it was just fun to honestly play in the final uh, with my team and uh, play against the team that I've commentated against multiple times. Uh, got to play against the Thomas Boyle, and uh, I've said that on the mic. And seeing him in person, like on the field, he's like the real deal. Um, I was told I had to give this other person a shout out from like multiple people because he was just balling out. But Matthew Paget, um, he is like the best. He's one of the best deep receivers I've seen in the mix game. And hit, Boyle to him was like unstoppable. We put our best like uh, deep defender on him at one point and he still like beat him. And it was just like a perfect throw to like the back right corner of the end zone. It was like unreal. I just shook his hand and was like, hey, good throw. What are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, game got to respect game. So, well, that sounds fun. I'm I'm happy for you that you got to have that finals experience. It is, it does feel different, even if that many people aren't aren't necessarily watching because they have to travel home or whatever. It's still like f- you feel that pressure, and you get to add that to your kind of like frisbee highlight reel now, the kick spite specifically. Yeah, it wasn't the best one I've ever done. I will, I will say that, but uh, yeah, we it was eight seven and a half. So we were like in the game, um, like and and felt that throughout. Uh, things got away a little bit at the end, but overall, like we're pretty happy with that after uh, some results that um, weren't the best in, in our estimation. Like we were able to to come second at this tournament. It's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, pretty stoked about playing in Ottawa. This is the tournament, folks. I'm not sure if people know. This is where Danny and I reunited last year because you were there on that same field, U20s kicking butt and winning the title. You probably remember that. That was a year ago now. Yeah, I do remember that. It was really fun. We were kind of, I think it would have been a stronger field this year. I think last year we're, we didn't get too many good games, which was kind of an issue because that was our only tournament heading into Worlds. But yeah, it was it was fun to kind of like work on our systems and everything. It was super hot. And that's actually when I, from my memory, met Pete Galbraith for the first time. I think that we'd met before. But this is what he told me. But he introduced himself and said that he was interested in coaching uh, U24s. And I was like going to bank that in the memory. And then a year later, look at us now. Best friends, right, Pete? Yeah, I don't know if he's an avid listener. I can tell him at practice later today that that you said that. But uh, yeah, that's deja vu for people on the team last year because 
local came in the final last year lost i believe on universe to red fox so coming in second again is still pretty cool but yeah i remember uh you also got to hang out with danger noodle a little bit got a i remember that so uh, definitely a lot of people coming up to you because you don't venture your way to ontario that often so um you were in bc this weekend though correct I was. you were like at home doing stuff yeah so there was prospect camp this weekend it was really fun so typically how ultimate canada does the u20 kind of coaching prospecty camp cycle is that the head coaches are selected and then they run prospect camps and then all of the assistant applicants assistant coach applicants usually go to the prospect camps and they run drills they're assigned to a team they interact with the head coaches and it's sort of like their tryout uh so that's kind of what i was doing this weekend just kind of helping run the prospect camp and getting to see a ton of kids that i've honestly been coaching since they're like grade three or grade four now in grade 10 or 11 like showing up to a team canada prospect camp is just like crazy it's it's really cool um a lot of the top top players weren't there which is very typical the prospect camps are a really good opportunity for players that are not from like the top top club team and that are super well known to get seen to get given advice to see the drills that they might see at a tryout if they go so we saw tons of kids from Kelowna and Kamloops that are looking really good right now the coaches up there are doing a phenomenal job with the programs Sunshine Coast we had some awesome kids from Sunshine Coast and Vancouver Island so it was amazing to see athletes from all over the place and their coaches there supporting them so it's a really fun weekend from my perspective We'll talk a little a bit about it more in the news, but that there's not too much to report, but it was a good time. I had fun. It was nice. Yeah, and you'll be uh you'll be on your way to Colorado at some point, right? In the next like two weeks, no? No. You're not going? I will not. Oh. No, I'm Live my, on air breaking best. news. <laughs> Danny not attending <laughs> the US Open with her club team. That's a breaking news right there. I know. It's like my friend, she literally was like, What are your important dates this summer? tell me and we didn't go to the u.s open last year so i didn't think we'd be going this year and so i said august long weekend is a good weekend for you to get married and so she chose that weekend to get married and then we're now going to the u.s open so unfortunately but also fortunately my friend is getting married she's my best friend since i was nine i'm obsessed with her so i'm heading to the sunshine coast traffic will be fine without their reset handler on o-line so and, hey, they'll make do you always need a good reset on o-line there so uh, that, that is the, um, the long introduction we've, we're having longer introductions because we haven't had these chances to talk as often. So that is why you get that. But, uh, I guess we'll head to the news now, because like you said, there's a lot going on. Um, it's not just Canadian, like Frisbee's ha or ultimate happening in this country. It's also teams going to the U S team perhaps wins a title as well. So we'll hit all that in the news. We now have breaking news. All right, welcome to the news part. I know I already talked about U20 Prospect Camp, but I'm going to wrap it up with a nice little bow. So as I said, it was the Saturday and the Sunday. So there's around 80 total athletes and 30 or more were female matching, which I think is a bigger number than normal. Like it's close to 50%, which is good. And the first day was mostly single gender. Second day, mostly mixed because there's going to be a mixed U20 team for the first time this year, which is very exciting. And yeah, as I said, the geographic representation of the camp was amazing. And I think that Ultimate Canada should be really happy with that specific part of it. And the last thing I want to say about it is that I feel like Ultimate Canada should do more ID or training camps throughout the year nationwide to get athletes from not Vancouver, not Toronto, not Montreal, mm. this kind of training to, and the coaches in those areas to kind of interact with higher level coaches. So I think it would be, it you could, you could charge for the camp so that the fees of the, the coaches or whatever are covered and everything like that. And it helps kind of like get more touch points with these communities, because I think there's just like some fundamental things that kids or athletes don't get access to if they're not from a major hub that maybe if these coaches are able to kind of go once a year, twice a year to these communities, it would make a really big difference. And so that's kind of my last thought on the prospect camp. Um, you have an announcement that just got, dropped a couple days ago yeah drop and drop and hot uh east coast tryout october 7 and 8 i'm a little u20 u20 i'm a little bit concerned uh that it's going to be during like a uni tournament no like no i feel like they would have 
avoided a unit tournament. Yeah, hopefully they avoid um like because I know I think Steel Town's early or middle September. So actually, it probably does. I think now that I think about this out loud, it's probably Steel Town Easterns, the Prospect Camp, and then Nationals. That's usually the tryout. The or yeah, the tryout. Sorry, the tryout and then Nationals. So that's usually what happens. Um, because you know some of these it only impacts first year players in college, so yeah, it's true. not like a huge deal. Yeah. I think it definitely affected some of like the U24 athletes because they had to play like totally that, that tournament last year, I remember. And then the West Coast, um, by the way, that city is location TBD right now. Just mark the dates yeah. on your calendars, folks. And then the West is October 28 and 29. Uh, that's Vancouver area. I don't think the field is like set, but like at least you know it's Vancouver no. area. Okay. Yeah. I like those dates are, are, tough like whether i'm coaching or not i still like to go and support and october 28 29 is like in between usa nats and beach world so i was planning on just like staying in california so tbd whether i'll be able to watch that tryout um unfortunate timing but i know that they got to hit it hit those tryouts in like the windows where you can play outside which Mm. technically is is year round here but they want to make them as close together as possible uh, in other news, there is a mixed division being proposed for CUUCs. And so Theo, clearly not a fan. There's no video, but his face is all scrunchy. But Ultimate Canada is excited to announce that they'll be adding a mixed division, so Div 3 to CUUCs, and it will be a 5v5 format. So in order to participate in Division 3, which is the mixed gendered tournament, your school must follow the following conditions. Be a school whose enrollment is 7,500 students or fewer. And if you are a school that does not has a team in CUCs in three or more years, you may also apply for exemption or exception. Okay, so the exception would be valid for two years if you get it. And after that, teams would need to apply for an exemption. So more details and rules to come. But if you are interested and you think that your school qualifies and you want to put in a team, you should go to the Ultimate Canada website. It is on there right now. They post about it on their social media. So fill out the survey, express your interest so they know whether they should move forward with this idea or not. Now, Theo, what are your reservations? Your face is a tell-all. Yeah, no one can see it. But yeah, I, I mean, I like expanding, giving more opportunities. I still think that you should expand D1. That's just my opinion. I'm, I'm always stuck on that. Like I think D1, you could give a little more teams. I, I do understand wanting to give smaller schools opportunity and i'm all about that um i just really always want to want to experiment and see what um like 6v6 mix would be like so it would have been really cool to maybe see that happen um i know it perhaps puts a wrench in like kind of the gender polling rules of like who's supposed to do it but like i think you would figure it out and i think it'd just be a cool experiment to see what like totally equal ultimate would look like like there's the same of each gender on the field at the same time would have been cool we'll we'll see how this takes off i think it will help some of the east coast schools that maybe have smaller representation perhaps a school like alberta or like schools that maybe don't have all the the depth because they don't have a certain amount of players maybe that will help them as well maybe some smaller schools in bc um perhaps it incentivizes some like ontario colleges too i don't know but i'm i have some reservations but i i still like the idea that you're trying to get more people playing. That's the thing I like the most. Yeah, and having it be mixed and only five on five means that you don't need a lot of people in order to fund a team or create a team. So I hope it takes off. I think that'll be really fun. I love Mixed Ultimate, biggest fan. Hey, uh, Mixed Coach out here, you gotta, you gotta say that. Come on now. Yeah, I loved it. I love my Mixed experience now. I'm like on the bandwagon. I already was. I just didn't play Mixed at the, that current time, but now I'm like- Well, you play Masters yes. Mixed though. True. And I do like playing mixed a lot. Like I've always been a fan. Um, In terms of Team Canada stuff, kind of wrapping up that portion of it, there are the Team Canada applications for World Ultimate Championships that are going to be in early September in the Gold Coast, Australia. The tryouts are and have already been announced, but the deadline to apply is August 1. So by the time the podcast airs, you only have a couple days to apply. And I know a lot of Ultimate players are last minute. Just get it in. Don't don't be somebody that regrets not applying. Go to the tryout if you can. It's a really great experience. Um, you get to see lots of really cool frisbee players there. So do it. There's the same advice we give uh, to people that 
should go to U20, U24 prospect camp. You just, you might as well just try. Like, obviously, the majority of people going aren't going to make the team. That's just how numbers work. But it's a cool experience that you never know could turn into something else. Remember, I remember a couple people who made U24s that did not make U20s. Like, there's specific roles. You don't know what that coach is looking for. And maybe you're exactly what they are missing. So go show them what they're missing. Yeah, if coaches need a someone to do a daily podcast for them in social media, I'm their person. So just hit me up, coaches, if uh, you need that. So uh, we're going to move to USAU Masters. Hey, there's some cool stuff happening. Some teams going out uh, to Colorado. Um Pretty fun tournament uh, for at least in the open. You had to qualify, so there was like a super regional. So these teams had to qualify. Uh, Ensom specifically from Montreal, uh, they went two and one in pool play. They defeated the number eight seed in a tight pool play game that got them the second seed, uh, which is actually pretty exciting. That set them up in a quarters with the number one seed overall, Voltron twenty twenty. Um, unfortunately, they go down in that game um, seven fifteen, and they finish out their tournament. Uh, they lose in the fifth place semis, uh, 15. Oh, sorry, excuse me. They win their fifth place semis and ultimately come in sixth, losing a close one to King Louis from St. Louis, Missouri. So that is pretty cool. Sixth place. A uni game to finish yeah, it. Yeah, uni too. game, uni game. Yeah, that's fun. Um, I know perhaps they, you know, every team wants to medal at this tournament, but hey, you finished sixth. That's pretty cool. And you got a chance to play one of the top Masters teams in Voltron 2020. Uh, so that's pretty fun. Uh, and some also sent a Grand Masters team. They um, had a little bit of a tougher pool play. They finished one and two uh, in that. And then they play through the ninth place bracket there. Uh, win their first quarter over Gravemaker 11-9. And then ultimately finish in 11th place, defeating Bighorn out of uh, Boulder, Colorado. So a kind of home team there. They are able to beat them for 11th. Uh, but there were two more teams happening. This is a bit of, uh, I'm going to quote unquote, older divisions. Grandmaster Women's, I believe that is... 37 and above 40 for men i'm I, i'm pretty sure that's correct uh so i'm gonna google yeah, while you yeah google break it google down. while i talk solstice from ottawa goes three and oh that's huge I believe they came fourth last year as well so they win uh three and oh in their pool um they take down retro in their quarter but ultimately go down to elder flowers from san francisco i'm going to assume there's i'm not even gonna look at the roster but i'm gonna assume there's some x fury in there that's all i'm gonna say uh 37 is confirmed. 30, the internet yeah, appreciate is that. in a wonderful place. Yes. Uh, they lose to henceforth to finish fourth again. Uh, they, yeah, they, they were the four seed coming in. They finished fourth. So, um, yeah, I mean, the fact that there's all these like teams in women's grand masters is pretty exciting. I would say like, it just means people are still playing um, as they grow older and wiser. They're still uh, out there slaying the disc, but um, the wisest team out there, is a team from Ottawa, the Silver Sisters. Come on, women's great grandmasters. That I checked is 45 plus on the female matching side. Danny, before I even share this news, are you going to be playing when you're 45? That would be pretty fun. Like, I, I don't know why I think that as soon as like I have a kid, my like life is over <laughs> because I have so many positive examples of women that have like families and are still out there kicking it. Like maybe it takes a bit to kind of get back up to your normal level, but yeah, I still enjoy playing and I could see myself if as long as I'm not completely broken, uh, still playing. It's it's fun. I like being part of teams and and challenging myself and it only gets more challenging as you get older. So, I mean, this team was the five seed going to it. Only six teams in this division, but against the third seed, Mother Huckers, they, went, they, they won 15-1. So they're really uh, dominating some teams out here. Uh, interesting note. So they were supposed to play the number one seed per sisters out of Boston, Massachusetts at 8.30 on Monday. But that game was basically canceled because that game is the de facto final or is the final. So they ended up just playing the final, which makes sense. I'm, I'm assuming the schedule makers didn't assume the uh, five seed was going to make the final. So um, Silver Sisters does make the final and they don't just make the final. They win the whole thing. So they, they get the game 12-8. They are the champions, women's great grandmasters. I bet a lot of people in the audience didn't know that division existed. And so now you know and give some love to the Ottawa team. They are, on, they are on Instagram, so don't think Masters Teams 8 or Great Grand Masters Team 8 on the gram. They're on the gram, so you can throw them a follow if you'd like. I'm doing that right now. Danny's doing that Silver right now. Silver Sisters. Silver Sisters. Everybody else do it too. They just they want a gold in the States, in USAU. Yeah. That's sick. That's hype. That's hype. So give them some love. Okay. 
Uh, they got a follow from me. There you go. Danny's following. You should do the same. While you're doing that, also follow us on Instagram. I assume you do already, but do that as well. But, uh, you know, there is uh, Masters happening, but there's also uh, the quote-unquote regular, we'll say senior divisions, uh, still going on with the U.S. And so some Canadian teams go into my favorite place, Danny, is, is what I'm telling you. The Midwest. Come on. The Midwest. Okay. So we have the Select Flight Invite. Can't really do a big preview because we don't have a schedule yet, but Goat's going, Phoenix is going, Red Flag is going, and Drift is going. I actually didn't even know Drift was going until this afternoon when I was having my Elevate meeting and one of my employees was literally in the airport heading to Toronto that, to eventually go to Ohio. She's like, I'm going to SFI. I was like, what? That's cool. And so Drift ended up last regionals winning a game on universe which made them qualify for select flights then they get to go to these tournaments which is amazing i'm like extremely happy that they're going so yeah it's going to be good there's quite a few teams going we we have the teams list we just don't know kind of like anything else about it and i think on on the open side goat has the number one seed well, they should be at this yeah. moment yeah and Phoenix is the number 15 seed at this moment. And then for mixed, Red Flag is the number one seed. They're in the elite flight, so they should be the number one seed here as well. Just with where CUCs was and everything else, it was really complicated for Vancouver teams. We, we kind of ended up having to go to places that we wouldn't normally go to qualify for these uh, for bids. Um, and so, yeah, Red Flag is probably going to beat up on a bunch of select flight and top select flight teams. Moondog's going to be there, which I know is going to be spicy and interesting because Moondog was the team that did earn the bid last year that Red Flag took, quote unquote, took, earned back from them. Um, so it should be, should be spicy. Yeah. In, in the, the mix side, Cleveland Crocs is going as well. And I think they're a team to watch out for in the Great Lakes region. So perhaps those will be some good games. But other than that, I think, uh, Red flag. They're they're the only elite team in the mix, so I think they're gonna have a pretty um, comfortable time. Uh, Goat the same. I, I'm hey Phoenix played go to a one point game at regionals, so I don't know if they'll match up in pool play. I hope they don't honestly because that's just like kind of silly. Like they can play in oh, Ontario, yeah. just like play other teams. But a lot of these teams that I'm listing or I see from this open team, most people wouldn't know. Like, did you know there's a team called? delirium from kennesaw georgia or a team called alamode from san antonio texas but you didn't know that i like both delirium ala and alamode because alamode means with ice cream at a restaurant and delirium is a really delicious like belgian beer i believe with like elephants on it it's really good okay like on the women's side there's some teams i recognize for sure like rival from columbus ohio and heist yeah these are teams i've been at nationals before i think i've taken a little bit of a step back so this will be a good test for drift because um, I know for some of these teams like they in BC, especially they have regionals and then not really anything else before CUC. So the fact they're getting some experience here, that's going to help them as they try to make a big CUC push. So uh, that is select flight invite. Um, like, like Danny said, we don't have a schedule. So unfortunately we can't uh, uh, give you any more details than that. Uh, last thing we're going to wrap up with the news before we head to uh, our no borders recap and then masters preview is AUDL. So the season is over for the Canadian teams, unfortunately. Womp, womp, womp. Uh, Toronto finishes 5-7, and seven, and Montreal fans close your years, but they go 0-12. So a tough season for the team from uh, for the Royale there. Uh, DC takes down Toronto on Friday night, uh, 27-17. Luke O'Meara, going to give a shout-out again. Somehow he's getting blocks on the O-line once more. So he got two blocks in this game as well. Um, it's the same issue that plagued Montreal in their game against Boston. Uh, both teams only had one break each in the game. So kind of tough to beat these AUDL teams when you're only getting uh, one break each. Uh, the Montreal-Boston game actually got called off due to weather. So since Boston was leading a half by six, they just like said the game's over. So Boston took that one. Uh, Philly and Toronto, that was a close one, 25-22. James Lewis trying to um, do what he did last year when he went like, I think it was 10 goals in the final game, but to finish with 50 on the season. But he finished with seven goals. Um, Mike McKenzie throw a little two assists, three goals, three blocks in there. But once again, they come up short, and New York takes on Montreal to end their season. 
Uh, CTJ, one assist, five goals in that one. They had four breaks in it, so that's still um, something to tip your hat on. Um, in terms of the, going to do a, just a very brief season summary for these teams because, uh, like I said, AUDL season is over for them. Uh, Phil Libordet is a guy that I saw when I was commentating. I was really impressed with him. Uh, he finishes with 26 goals um, and over 1,500 receiving yards. He only played 10 games. And uh, the person who came in second only played in six games, Will St. Pierre. I believe he's U24. Um, he uh, had 23 goals. So you only play six games and you have 23 goals. That's pretty good. Um, got, that's crazy, actually. Yeah, that's, that's actually really good. Um, I know there's more goals in AUDL than like a normal Frisbee game, but still, you still got to find the end zone. So um, Kevin Quinlan leads a team with 38 assists. Uh, he's only 11 goals away from 200. Just AUDL legend. Been playing since the Rochester Dragons. So if anyone knows about that, uh, 3,000, over 3,000, almost 3,000 throwing yards. Uh, Trump Jonka again, just dominating the, the deep space for them. Had 14 blocks. Um, so there's some different contributions there. They got um, Cale Campbell, who's in his first year with the Royale. He finished with over almost 2,700 throwing yards. So you get some contributions from these Ottawa people hoping that the experience of your U24 athletes from this year will build into stuff for the future. I'm hoping they can keep the same coaching staff as well. Um, if they can do that, they can build on kind of what happened. Uh, for Toronto, I think um, for some of them, it's going to be disappointing because a lot of people pick them to make the playoffs um, at the beginning of the season, but they finished five and seven. Ryan Polaz leads the team with 33 assists. Luke Comire just continues to like just be the sickest center handler out there. Uh, as of right now, sixth in the league in throwing yards um, and then sixth in the league in total yards as well. So it's just like pretty cool to see a kid. I, I'm sure many people have heard this story. Uh, went to rush games as a teenager, now playing for the rush as a captain. Pretty cool stuff. Um, James Lewis leads all people in the league. Is that right? 3,858 receiving yards. That's crazy. Uh, 39 goals. He's just like all over the stat sheet. BC zone, Ty Barbieri making a big, there's no like newcomer of the year in the AUDL, like, cause you're either a rookie or you're not, but he's not a rookie, but he hasn't played in the AUDL in a while. So he should get maybe something, but he had a really big impact. Uh, 39 goals as well, uh, over 4,000 yards. And then Mike McKenzie made his return to the rush. Um, and he had a pretty good season. I mean, 18 assists, 20 goals, 13 blocks, uh, started playing more on D line. So, um, pretty cool stuff from the kind of individual, people that uh the stat sheet but collectively a little disappointing because i know they were hoping for the playoffs and weren't able to make it so hopefully this drives them to keep the core together and then try to make a push next year so um yeah no there's no third team so it's just two canadian teams left in the adl we're hoping one of them makes the playoffs next year yeah i think like a lot of the u24 players being pretty occupied and actually playing pretty big roles on these teams definitely would have had a negative impact on their seasons. So there's no U24 next year. So they kind of got their whole squad focused and ready to go. So maybe we'll see an upturn next season. That's going to conclude our news. We're going to talk no borders recap. There's some interesting stories that happened out of it. Uh, I'm going to eat some of my words and uh, also give some love to some teams that really uh, did well this tournament. And then we're also going to preview CUC masters. Danny, is this right? We're going to talk about every team at least We'll say something. We'll say something about every team. Is that right? We're gonna say we're gonna say the team's name out loud. Maybe where they're from. Maybe some players. Ooh. Okay. Stay tuned for that. We'll be right back. This is Nick McFadden from the University of Manitoba Open Team, your 2022 CUUC Division One Open Champions, and you're listening to the Huck and A Podcast, your coast to coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. All right. Welcome to main event part. Un. One. I am learning French, no so borders. good job. Thank you. I know the number one, en français. Uh, no borders recap. So we're going to start with the women's division. Theo, boots on the ground. Tell us all about all the action. Hey, boots on the ground, but I'm going to piggyback off what Danny said many, many weeks ago. Danny, you remember what you said? You was I, I was there, but I was focused on my own team or something. Yeah, yeah. I was playing, so... Um, during most of the action, I was playing, so I did not see things up in personal in the same way that a straight reporter would have. So, I, like once again, give that caveat out there. Uh, but some big stories from pool play: two pools went to seed. So, good job, uh, schedule maker, tournament directors, yeah, schedule yeah. maker. Okay, <laughs> Stella and Salty win their pools. 
Uh, Cube wins our pool as well with EXO getting a big W over Oz out of Ottawa to finish second in the pool. But the biggest story, you're going to like this. Wicked West, the 11 seed overall, they're going to have this big run. They go 2-0 in pool play. But they're starting to prove some people wrong out here. And I got I got a message from one of the coaches. All I'm going to say, he said, you're sleeping on my team out here. And I was like, uh-oh, maybe I'm, I'm a little bit concerned here. And uh, that's what happened. So anyways... From there, there were two power pools with the top two seeds of those power pools going to semis. Um, Cube wins their power pool with Wicked West coming in second. So Wicked West guaranteeing themselves a spot in the semis. Um, Stella wins their power pool with a combined 45 and 14. So that is wild. Stella just really showing their might here. Um, then there was a, a three-way tie going on. Um, Salty beat PPF in pool play by one, but then they got waxed by Valkyrie by six. And then Valkyrie dropped a close game to PPF by uh, two. So that allowed Valkyrie to make it to the semis. So when you wax a team uh, and there's a three-way tie going on, you get the advantage. So they go on to the semis. Uh, semis, unfortunately, not close out here. Uh, Stella and Cube win pretty easily. And Stella wins the whole tournament. Um, I, once again, couldn't see the women's final because I was playing the mixed semi at the time. But they win the Sean Kogelji Cup. And uh, Wicked West, you come third. So it's amazing. Dang, like juniors team. You got to think this team's going to have like final aspirations out here, like CUC juniors. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, whatever Dino versus. Yeah, I think so. Wicked West. I think that their coaches have been doing an awesome job of giving them really high level competition because I know that sometimes when you're a good juniors team, playing into other juniors team in your area isn't exactly super helpful. Um yeah, and so I think it's even the 15-8 game for them versus Stella in the semis, like that's a respectable mm. score. Like this is a very established women's team that has played against other very talented women's team and has had a lot of success. For a juniors team to be able to get eight points against them is is pretty incredible. So shout out to Wicked, shout out to the players and the coaches. Good job. Yeah, I mean, I was wrong. Let's just say that I picked them to be like in the nine also. Uh, Aguada claims fifth. Um, momentum takes ninth, which I think will help them build some momentum as they beat one of the teams that they'll probably see at Nationals in Oz. Um, for picks, I only got two uh, semis picked right, and I also had Cube winning. So definitely uh, not not doing so well in the picks here as uh, Stella wins it. Um, and so Stella, semis contender potentially at uh, Nationals. I think that's like the, the vibe yeah. I'm getting because uh, I'm going to say there's probably – People are the pundits out there. That that means me and you. Uh, Sixers, <laughs> traffic, Iris are probably what people would pick for the three semi spots, and then you have this fourth semi spot that could be taken by a few teams out there. No, Fusion, Stella, Cube, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe Cube. Incognito, maybe Incognito. Come on, like maybe they could Salty. Salty, yeah, I don't really know, but I, I think like Stella and Fusion would be my picks at this current moment, but. TBD. Yeah, I haven't really seen... I'm not doing picks. <laughs> not yet, not right now. Uh, I haven't really seen, like... Well, we saw the results of Fusion from Fishbowl, but that, like, once again, it's kind of early for them. So, uh, that's something to, to keep an eye out on. Um, we're going to jump to open here. Um, I had someone on Quake tell me that he proved me wrong, so I appreciate that. That was always fun to hear. Uh, they win their pool 3-0, and but they win it by scoring 41 goals and only giving up 18. So... You don't just win your pool. You dominate your pool out here. GT also upsets a number one seed still with a 13-11 W. Uh, still not the, the still that we saw at Masters Nationals in 2022. So a little bit of a different still. They picked up a lot of players. So, uh, you know, take that for what you will. Uh, Quartz, um, continuing the good Quebec City feelings out here. They go 2-1. and one. They take down Pipe, and uh, Red Circus also avenges their loss against Pipe. Uh, let's just say it was not a weekend to remember, uh, perhaps on the dance floor for pipe, but not on the field is all I'm going to say, uh, for them. Um, you know, some people are going to say, I know for a fact at this tournament, teams were missing players, but like I always say, if you go in as your team, that's what you get. Right, Danny? Like, I don't know. Yeah. The results are the results. Like we can't just have all these asterisks beside everything. Like there's always like, maybe this person's sick this person, or this person's recovering from this yeah. or... This person's dog ate their cleats or something and they can't play. Like the, those things happen, but like. We're talking about the team. We're not talking about the players. Yeah. So anyways, lower pools, there were some upsets though. 
Uh, Phoenix, I believe, was seed last in their pool, and they actually win it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Roy wins their pool over Magma. Chair, I was told I got to give some love to Chair because they had some players actually from Kingston. I didn't know that they were going to be playing on this team. And they go 3-0. and They had a couple players from your, uh, I'm not sure if you know this, from your mixed team. Did you know that? I, I do know this because I've seen a lot of like social media okay. love, I think from Ed Kung about it. <laughs> He's like obsessed with like the fact that Monica was playing. So, which is, it's cool. And I think it's right. Awesome. So Monica Wang was playing on open, an open team chair. And so is Cam Kennedy. So both you 24 mixed players. And apparently Monica was just like slicing it up out there, just crushing it, which doesn't surprise me. She was a great mixed player because she's fearless. Like, doesn't matter who she's going up against. She'll sky them or whatever. Like, she doesn't care. And so I, I love that she was playing. This chair kind of feels like a, a knockoff of Parcha. No? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it is, but the, the, the picture they have on Instagram is like them all holding chairs. It's pretty funny. Like, are they throwing chairs? Because that's the Parcha thing. Is that what actually happens in their games? They actually throw chairs? They're not allowed to anymore because it was like dangerous or whatever. Were they throwing yes, chairs they at like they, their own they teammate? Throw chairs. No, they throw it on the sideline. Oh, I think that's fine, no? Um, anyways. I don't know. That's funny. Uh, hey, another Ottawa Juniors team proving me wrong out here. Ignite wins their pool. I said they would lose to T-Rex. They did not, so they're killing it out here. Um, the quarters game happened on Saturday, so if you finish second or third in the power pool, you end up playing a quarter, so still gets a, a close win over Quartz. And GT gets their first W over Pipe this season. I, I believe that's true. Um, and that is a big win for them. They're not going to Nationals. But they perhaps uh, will affect how their uh, Toronto rivals are seeded. So I guess that's like... Does, does yeah. this tournament have anything to do with seeding? If you're pipe, you don't want it to be. That's all I'm going to say. But Well, I feel like they have to use regional results. Yeah, so from what I've been told, um, basically pipe, for example, cannot be seeded above Phoenix because like they're below them like at regionals. But it affects like interprovince connections. So like them losing a quake, for example, or like them dropping lower than quake is like a big deal because quake then could be in a different pot than them. Same thing with red circus. So there's some like provincial connections. Um, yeah. GT went on a break run uh, to book their spot in the semis uh, quake and red circus. They got buys cause they won the pool. They clash in the final quake gets the big W this game was also happening while we were trying to warm up for our mixed semi. So people are warming up, but we're also trying to like some, some people, not a lot of people. We're trying to see what was going on. Cause it's universe point in the open final out here. Uh, from what I've been told, like I said, I was warming up uh, two turnovers a piece. There were turn multiple turnovers, but quake does start an offense and they're able to show some fortitude and win the whole tournament 12, 11. So big up to them still takes third 14, 11. Uh, so quake, I was high up on them beginning of the season. Some of the results weren't as hot as I would have hoped. And then they showed it um, at close to nationals. So that's pretty fun here. Um, out, I'm just going to talk quickly about fifth place semis. I'm not going to go in, into all the results here, but out beats Pipe, avenging their uh, Jazz Fest finals loss out here. And they also avenge another loss that they had at regionals. And so they win fifth, 13 12. Chair, we're, we're going to, why are we talking about this chair team? They make a miracle run. They finish ninth. Uh, they were seated 21st. So, Danny, I think we got to give some love. There is a ninth place trophy. I bet you didn't know that. Ninth place trophy out here. Like, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's it's interesting <laughs> for sure. Good for you. It's like winning Div 2 in like college, right? It's the same idea. Yeah. You finish ninth. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Div cool. 2 at no borders. We're going to crown a new name out here. Uh, Ignite also gets in that game. Uh, so, fun story there as well. Um, I will say I got three out of the four teams in the semis. I missed on pipe. So uh, good on you, GT, for beating them in the quarters. Um, but yeah, I also nailed the fifth place game exactly out beating court. So that's kind of fun. Um, some fun tidbits, tidbits for you. Loyal was seated ninth. And uh, if you're from Laval, you turn your years away, but you finished 22nd. So that's a big uh, drop out here. That's an eeks. And uh, my alma mater, Maverick, they had a good regionals, but uh, not, not a good no borders out here. They're seated 11th and finished that can't be right. 23rd? That cannot be right. They finished 23rd? That is... Just close your eyes and close your ears. It can't be... Don't worry about it. Yeah, it can't be 23rd. That's wild if that's true. Oh, no, it is true. 
23rd. That's tough. Okay, so yeah, close your ears, uh, Maverick fans out there. So um, yeah, we're going to talk mixed. Um, once again, I, I play in this division, so uh, I can't watch all the games that's happening. So every mixed pool besides one had the top seed winning. So once again, schedule makers, fact checker out here. <laughs> Good job. We, we know you're out here uh, seeding things and you did well. Uh, the only big upset was Harfang defeating Crash. Um, Crank squeaks by local 9-8 on hard cap. Uh, PBHG takes on Crux on Universe to win the pool as well. So there was some interesting pool results. Uh, pre-quarters happened on Saturday afternoon, um, like the last game of the day. Even if you lose that, you can still uh, like make your way into quarters, which most of the teams did. Um, three of the four top seeds won. Uh, PBHG and Crank squeak through again, beating Crash and Red Fox respectively by one. Local 6-1-3. Takes down Spawn 13-7 uh, in their pre-quarter as well. Um, so then in the lower pre-quarter, you have like the top teams from the lower pool taking on the team that finished last in the top pool. Um, so this Tea Party team there, they had some union, some like they had some good touring players out here. So they're kind of sneaky out here. Um, and there was also a game between Zen and Mixed Berries that based on the spirit sheet, I would have loved to see what was happening in the game. Because let me Danny's, you can't see this on video right now, but Danny's ears just like, like her eyes like lit up. Um, I love spirit. I'm pretty sure a team got a zero. Like I am more than like, I was told a team got a zero. I'm going to have to look at this later. I Yeah, I don't know if that, that can't be right. That can't be right. The team getting a zero. I mean, I think I've made my, my thoughts on spirit scores and stuff well known. And I think that if there are big outliers, Giving a zero and telling a team why I think is like important. It's important to give teams the opportunity. And I think that as long as they were told why, and it wasn't just like, yeah, good game. You really challenged us X, Y, Z, and then zero. That stuff pisses me off. So if you're going to give a team something other than a two, especially if it's negative, tell them what it was. Give them specific examples so the team can improve on it. Yeah, I can't. Did I give you enough time to look at it? No, you didn't because I, I can't even like find it right now. So I can keep ranting about spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah like. go rant while I keep looking for the spirit score. <laughs> okay. So to talk about my U24's experience, we got like, a really low spirit score in our last two games, which brought us down quite a bit. And I was actually pretty happy with how we were doing spirit wise the whole tournament. Like teams were making dangerous bids against us, but we weren't making dangerous bids against them. Like sometimes we we're a bit physical, but it was it was not like like the bad bids that I think Canada has been known for way back in the day. Anywho, we actually learned these rules, specifically double team rules, to call them properly against Singapore and Japan because we saw that they were double teaming a bunch. And so we were using the rules and calling them. And then they gave us a low spirit score for like calling double team a lot, which really annoyed me because the game advisors were agreeing with our team. And so to get a zero or a one for rules, knowledge, and use when we were actually applying the rules properly makes me really frustrated because then we ended up finishing low in spirit. So that's why I just like, I like the spirit scores like, ugh, gosh, if like you can't actually like justify why you're giving a team a bad spirit score, like get out of here. Okay. Rant over. Did you get, no, did you I, I can't out? find it. It was just, it was just word on the street. I was told. So, um, okay. So don't take, that's a word on the street situation. So, uh, we're going to leave it at that, but in the pre quarters on Sunday, so, Teams that made quarters get the luxury of sleeping in. Teams that did not. It's a luxury. <laughs> they had to play at 830, which, as you know, with no borders, I'm not sure if you had to take the shuttle last year, but if if you choose to take the shuttle, you got to park at the school and then you got to shuttle in. And if you have a later game, you're probably not going to get a spot in the parking lot, so you might as well just go to the school. So, anywho, all the top seeds win the pre-quarter, so they end up still making the quarters. But there were some close games. Red Fox wins by one over Quest, and this Tea Party team pushes Crash um, the third seed out of Ontario, 13-12. So Crux also defeats Ragnarok. There were two quarters that were super tight. Crash ekes out a 9-8 win and Local defeats Crux on Universe. Crank. What did I say? Crank ekes out a 9-8 win over Crash. What did I say? You said Crash. Crash. Crash ekes out a 9-8 win over themselves. So that's actually what happened. Perfect. No, Crank, Crank, sorry, Crankers uh, from Ottawa. You eke out a win over Crash. Local defeats Crux on Universe, 12-11. Uh, on the other side, PBHG, um, wins their game comfortably, and so does and Harfang also appears in the semis. Uh, PBHG wins their semi 15 6. Uh, local starts on defense and wins on universe over crank 12 11 to book their ticket to the finals. 
Um, as I already said at the top, uh, that game was on serve 8-7, but PBHG wins 15-11. I already gave a shout-out to Matthew Page. He was a nightmare on the field. Um, and someone that, if other mixed teams are listening, red flag, you got to put someone on him because he's going to like roast you in the deep space. I'm sure they got a few people that they could put on him, but he was uh, he was all over for them. Um, Quest takes ninth over this Tea Party squad. I keep mentioning because somehow they're like they finish in the ninth place game. So there are some scores incomplete in the lower bracket. So I can't speak too much to that. So um, it was fun to have Spawn. I think having Spawn out there is good because it creates some connectivity for some of these teams. Because Spawn has already played um, Crash, for example, at Mixed Easterns, beating them. And then they get to play some Quebec teams and some Ontario teams. So that perhaps allows some more connectivity when Ultimate Canada is trying to figure out seeding for nationals. That's true. What I find interesting is that PBHG had close games kind of in pool play and then kind of just coasted through. Not coasted through. Like I know the final was tight to half, but kind of like a commanding playoff run for them. Maybe they're just like a bit younger and are like fine on day two or I don't really know yeah, I, why that is, but they just, they like barely took the number one seat in their pool. It seemed like, and then we're like flying after that. Yeah. After that pre uh, quarterfinal over crash when they won 11, 10, I believe that game was on universe as well. Um, they beat spawn in quarters, 15, 10, and then Harfang 15, six and then the final 15, 11. So um, they maybe they just got yeah. stronger at the end. Um, they probably haven't played as many tournaments as these other teams, so it just took a little bit longer to kind of get their stuff figured out, potentially. Yeah, that's my other gripe right now. I know at regionals, people were complaining about four games on Sunday. Some teams would have played for, like Crash, for example, would have played four games on Sunday because they had their pre-quarter. That's a lot of games on a Sunday, folks. Um, it, yes, yeah, that's a lot. too many. Like, Crash started at 8.30, and their day would have ended at, I think, yeah, their game would, they would have ended at 4.30 on Sunday. Yeah, that's a lot. Like that's a lot of games. That's a lot. So uh, definitely a record amount of teams at this tournament, but um, it's just a lot of games out here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. I just wanted to play PHG. Like I've like I've called them in the booth so many times. Um, I was talking to one, to one of the captains, Josh Kern. He said on the line that he had told his team that, uh, that I knew all about them. He's like, they know about us because this guy has called a bunch of our games. So he's gonna know who <laughs> we are. Information. He's gonna know who we are. So um it helped to some extent, but uh they do get the upper hand. They'll probably be, I'm gonna predict seated second at CUC, probably red flagging the first seed is what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's that sounds like what I it would think be. That's safe, safe bet. They're also in the finals at UCI together. Yeah, perhaps they might seed Union ahead of PBHG um because of their win last year, but we'll see. I think, yeah, the It'll be very interesting how they uh, decide to do things with teams like Traffic, who wasn't there last year, uh, Sixers, Goat, Fierce. Like all these teams that you know are traditionally strong are going to be the highest. Like they didn't play in the championship last year. So do you penalize a team like General Strike, who came uh, first last season, but now Fierce and Goat are out here lurking? Mephisto's back too. So, hey, I'm not the one making the seeds. That's all I'm saying. But uh, we'll, we'll find out soon. All of those chips will land. So are we good to move on to CUC Masters? Yes, let's move on to CUC Masters. Okay, main event part two. Yeah, no break. We're just jumping right in. Coming Lead at us you, off. yeah, because I need to eat. Um, I, I gave blood today. I gotta go coach. Yet, I gotta go coach, It's almost 1.30 yeah, p.m. That's true. So we busy out here. So, okay, we're going to start with the women's Masters. There's 13 teams. And first of all, obsessed with this. Cologne is not like the easiest place to get to. It's not like an international main like airport hub. It's the fact that there's 13 masters women's teams is dope. So in pool A, we have Stello from Ottawa. So they came first in 2022. They were second in world masters ultimate club championships in Ireland. I got to watch that final. They were incredible. They won Tuxed and their closest game was 9-6 to Incognito. So they were also 3-3 at Fishbowl where all the best women's teams basically besides traffic were there. Uh, including a 9-8 win over the Sixers and a close one-point loss to TCU 24. So they played OUC to get in reps, suffered losses to Sixers, and played Stella on Thursday before no borders. So they have been tried, tested, and true. They are ready to go for this tournament. They are led by Mel Dunbar, so played obviously Team Canada before. Jesse Brown, Marie-Christine Jacques, and Alicia Zhao are all on TC women's masters ultimate club championship team in 2020 sam lee brown and 
um, added Union's Jackie Mann this year as well. Star studded, battle tested, ready to go. Uh, I think the only like one of the main kind of crossover games is that they played macrame in a shortened final like last year. So rain, rain, rain. Kind of know. You know, super rainy, but yeah. So we we'll talk about macrame next because they're the number one, number two team in Pool A from Montreal. They came second, as I said, in 2022, and they were 13th overall at Masters Club Championships in Ireland. So their top three scorers are not on the roster this year, which is interesting. So including Catherine Poirier, who had 12, second amongst all players. Uh, Gabrielle Baudon had 10 goals in 2022 at CUCs as well. So finishing out Pool A, we have the Retro Rebels from from Calgary. I like that. You can call them like Go Rebs. I think there's a lot go of- Rebels. Cool go Rebels. Hey, I love the name. Things. The logo is pretty hype too, I think. And they're led by Jennifer Jenkins. I don't know much about this team, so I'm very excited to kind of see what they can do at Nationals. Moving on to Pool B, we have Vans, the number two seed overall from Vancouver. It's basically like X traffic with some current traffic players sprinkled in. So this team's going to be good. They got Betsy Chan, Jen Kwok, Jessica Rockliffe, Laura Mason, Aaron Busson, tons of household names in Canadian Frisbee. And their only loss at BC Regionals was to traffic and... They gave us a good game. Uh, they're going to be ready to go. They're not quite as battle tested, not even close as Stello. So that might be their Achilles heel, but we will see. Number two in pool B and number seven overall, we have Prairie Sky from Winnipeg. They have a lot of X-Fusion players, so expect them to be fast and aggressive. I like that kind of Winnipeg style Frisbee. It should be really fun. And the third seed from pool B is Kesar from Quebec City, fifth in 2022. They're led by Julianne Terrio with 10 good points French. at CUCs. I'm trying out here. Yeah, that's it's good. Like you're really killing bad. it. Uh, well, uh, you're killing it to me as someone who speaks Anglais. So maybe uh, the French people are shaking their heads. They're like just Sorry, cool. this dying inside. Yeah. Uh, they hold wins over Vintage and Aguada this season and women's club team momentum twice. And so I know they're the number three seed in this pool, but expect them to kind of make some noise. All right, Pool C, we have Sage from Quebec. I love his name. It's like Sage Wise. It's a perfect Masters team. That's some names out here. So this, like Helena Shrashvi Beauvert, I don't know how she pronounced her last name. I've just seen it on the back of a jersey as she's like scoring on people constantly. She played Epoch last year at in Ireland at Wamuk in 2022. Marie Laurence Lebert, Marie and Pelon were all selected to the mixed team in 2020 as well, the mixed masters team. And yeah, they're just in incredibly deep, this team. And they've also been playing together for a long time, typically on mixed teams. So I'm excited to see what they can do on a women's team. Um, Julie Laundry won the CUC title with Lab in 2019. And, and Isabel LeMay know them more for the coaching with Montreal Royal and U24 as well. Uh, great players. I mean, I could keep going on, but... They had one win at Fishbowl over Fusion and a close one-point loss to U24 women. So they've also played some really high-level games as well. And they went 3-0 at Boston Invite, including beating the number two seed overall wave, 13-2. to So 3-0 at Boston Invite because the games are canceled, right? Yeah, yeah. We talked to, yeah, we um, had talked about last week that, you know, General Strike Iris technically, I guess, won, but with asterisks on their, uh, on their titles there. So, uh, um, yeah, Sage would have had a chance to compete, but once again, weather playing tricks on them last weekend. Number two in their pool C, and at number six overall, we got Big Kids from Vancouver, led by Amanda Shepard and Cat Lee. I got to play against them. They're going to be a good team. I think like we zoned them a lot, and they were like quite good at breaking through the zone. So number three seed in that pool, Queen's Peas from Cambridge, Ontario. They finished seventh overall in 2022, led by Mandy Dembar. We got Tana... Gonzalez previously played for Capitals, six assists in 2022. They won two games at Tux over North and Toro with close games with PPF six to seven. So they finished second overall at MGM in Ottawa, losing twice to Solstice. So again, they've got some game experience. And I think that goes a long way because a lot of these teams are kind of like pickup teams. And so these teams that are maybe not as like talented on paper with stars might actually have a slight advantage just because they played together. Pool D, Old Garden from Calgary. I'm very excited by this team. 
because they have Terry Whitehead. I love Terry Whitehead. Wait, who is that? Whitehead. Never heard of Terry Whitehead before. World Games, Team Canada, Traffic, Forever. Uh, Tessa Kenning from Vancouver Island, actually, and Amanda Ho. So this team is going to be super fast. I think they're going to be a defensively mindsetted team, like aggressive, quick, um, and and fun to watch. And I just like that Old Garden is like OG. I think it's a good a good team name. Is that what it's from? I don't know. They just you're, have like OG as their logo. You're, so you're giving it to them that it's, it's because they're original gangsters. That's what it is. Yeah, obviously. And then we have Sour from Halifax, led by Maggie Mac- McMichael. And some ex salty players, which should be really fun. We have number 12 overall seed lore from Toronto. So they're third in pool D they came eighth overall in 2022. They're coached by Elen Azuzenza. Azuzena. I say her name. Azuzena. Azuzena. It's like the coolest last name and I never always say it wrong, but Elen, you're dope. Love you. So there's some big wins they have over at Tux, including over PPF and Queens P's. They finished fourth overall at MGM in Ottawa, and they played PPF again and lost them at OAC and went winless. So kind of like a little bit up and down for this team. Don't know what we're going to get. Number four overall in Pool D, we have Cora from Regina. I just think this is funny and awesome that their spirit captain and their captain are Bobby and Robbie, and I just think that's great. Uh, G, G. Lee and Petra Stevens are kind of the most notable names to, for me anyway on this Cora team, and I'm excited to have some new names become part of my repertoire after watching them this weekend. So basically, I think the seating looks great. I When I looked at the teams that were going and their rosters, I would have picked all four of the number one seeds to be the teams that I would think would be in semis. We'll do picks in a little bit, but basically after pool play, there are power pools with pool E containing number one seeds with all four pools. And then the other ones are spread out into the other pools. So power pool matchups happen on Saturday along with quarterfinals. All the first seeds get a bye to semis, which is which is interesting. Women's pool D as at 4.30 local time on Friday quarterfinals at 2.30 on Saturday and one on Sunday for finals. Semis and finals take place on Sunday. Yeah, those are the live streams. Those are live streams out there. So uh, yeah. live streaming out here, uh, 4.30 local time. So it's in BC, folks. So if you're in Ontario trying to catch your pool D action, you got to have d- three hours. At three hours. I'm always struggling with time zones whenever we try to schedule podcasting. I will say that. It's, a, it's the biggest struggle. It's like... Honestly, you say 12 o'clock. I'm like, uh, is that your time or my time? <laughs> I know we, we we're working on it. We're working on it. Which, which time That's is hard. it? Which time is it? Okay. Um, thank you for that. That, uh, very detailed. Hey, you've talked about every team. That's good. Um, wait, Theo. Oh, I like it when we're candid on the podcast. Okay, go. And so while you talk about mix, I'm just going to go to the washroom. Well, we got to pick. Can we do picks first, and then you go? Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay. It's not urgent, but okay. everybody, these podcast episodes are long, and I drink a lot of coffee, so I have to pee really badly. But we can do our picks. This is why I'm talking really quickly. Okay, <laughs> we'll do picks for women. Well, I have. Let a, me I go have first. all four seeds. I mean, like I have all four seeds in the semi, so that's like I think pretty like cut and dry. Oh, I see. I have um yeah. I have Stello and Vans in the final, and. uh I'm going to go, I'm riding with the BC squad. I see, I see the the names on this, uh, the X traffic players out here or, or current perhaps too. And I'm going to uh, pick Vans to take the title in women. So uh, yeah, I'm going, I'm riding yeah. Vancouver. I got all four number one seeds also in semis as like, I just by looking at these rosters, I think that's, that's how it's going to go unless something crazy happens. I also have Stella versus Vans in the final, and I wanted to make it a little bit spicier and vote against all my friends to give them some motivation. And I got Stella winning it. I think their experience playing tournaments together like for the last couple of years will give them an edge. And if the Vans people are listening to this and they're like, screw you, Danny, we're going to prove you wrong. You're welcome. Hey, Danny. Danny's going to rush out. I'm going to keep going with Mix here. She'll join us. Uh, hey. She'll join us shortly. So we're going to talk Mix here. Uh, kind of interesting because there's like a play in for some of the pools. There's already a pool that's determined in pool D. Uh, but I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through who I think will be in each pool kind of. And just like all the different teams. We're just going to go with that. So the first seed overall uh, should be and, and will be cold out of Quebec. So they finished uh, tied for third in 2022 and fourth at World Masters in 2022 as well. And they have a lot of the same players. 
but they don't have Danny, who's not here to listen to this part, uh, who had five assists and 13 goals. Dan Bauer, 19 assists, four goals, and Carlos Young, nine assists, one goal. So they're part of that like BC contingent that played with this team at World Masters. So they will be playing for other teams at this tournament. Uh, they will still have Julie de Grand Maison, uh, 13 goals at Wamak, and Mathieu de Marie, who had 10 points at CUC in 2022. Uh, Catherine Carrier, who uh, played for Macrame uh, in 2022 at CUC, had two assists and eight goals, and will be also on this cold squad. Uh, we also have happy campers out here. Uh, that's who they're going to play first in this kind of playing game for the winner to get the first seed in Pool A. Um, Got to give some love to um, Clay Howlett out here because uh, I've commentated with him. He's a great commentator, but he's going to be not on the mic. He's going to be playing out here for this victorious side. Also have Pat Frisbee. He was an alternate for the uh, Grand Masters uh, men's team for uh, Wamuk in 2020. That didn't happen. So when we talked about all the players that had played in 2020, technically they didn't play, but they were on the team. So we always want to uh, give some love to that. And Danny, you've said this before, but Happy Cam is a very fun squad out here. Uh, they did take a close 9-11 loss to TT at Sunflicker. And they do hold a win over Forever Too Young. So, hey, they got, they're not just a, do they practice? Do you know? Yeah, I think they practice. And I think Well, whenever... they go to tournaments too. They, they went to Disc Flicker and Sunflicker, it looks like. So, they're out here playing yeah. tournaments. Yeah, they're going to be a good team. They're good vibes. They're good people. I love them. They're my homies, but I wish them not well when they play against Forever Young, but I wish them well when they play against everyone else. There you go. Well, Forever Too Young, it's okay if they play them, but uh, other teams um, potentially in uh, Pool A is going to be, or will be in Pool A, uh, will be uh, Flo. So Flo is out of uh, Toronto. They finished ninth in 2022. Kyle Monique had 10 assists and three goals at last year's CUCs. They have a lot of similar players. And forever too young, by my uh, calculations here, they hold a win over Fable at Disc Flicker. So that's kind of a big win for them. That's pretty cool. So um, now I'm going to talk about Yop. Uh, they play Pandemonium. Well, that's going to be a good game, actually. Yop versus Pandemonium. Uh, game B there, Field 5, on your Friday, 8.30 a.m. local. Uh, Yop. Danny, who is on this Yop team? Because, uh, like, they got some legends out here. Come on. Yeah, so Jordan Moens, I think like the Moens family is pretty famous. Yes. There's Rachel Moens that played on Traffic, also World Games, Team Canada. They have Julie Moens, who I believe was in like the TFP realm. And then, yeah, Jordan Moens. They're all like disc golf players, ultimate Frisbee legends. And so Jordan Moens is captaining the team. Corinne Dunwoody was a, a UVic player with me back in the day and also played Traffic and has been kind of like circling around playing for lots of different teams. We have Graham Barber, who was like on Blackfish forever, and Uvic. Uh, he's very squirrely, very crafty, and still looks like a young college pup. <laughs> and then Ted Chu. So he's like one of the creators of the Misfit program back in the day. And uh, he was, it's Ted's team. That's TT, he was originally stead for Ted's team. So he was the kind of like the impetus or whatever you call it, or like the inspiration for that team. That's the wrong word, but inspiration for that team. So they're going to be good. Also, my ex-boyfriend's on this team. Very exciting. Shout out to Aiden. You're the- No way you, you just said on the podcast right now. That is <laughs> freaking hilarious. Hey, we did it for a long time. No, we, we're friends. That's, we're friends. Okay, all this good. is definitely not in the notes, folks. Not in any of our discussions. <laughs> on the fly. I love it. Taylor Nadon, is that how you say it? Yeah. Wishing you all Shout the best. Out. Good luck at this tournament. Obviously not the best of luck because Danny. Not when you play against Forever Young. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Like I wish you well <laughs> in your life and on, in Frisbee, but um, not against my team. <laughs> yeah. This, this is just throwing off the whole uh, podcast here. I love it. Uh, Lindsay Earls also played for Union. Another Ontario person, Sean Huynh, won a Masters title in 2022. Was still, he had a 10 assists and six goals at the tournament. So that's still pretty hype there. Um, they placed third at BC Regionals, and we talked about this last week, Danny. They were sinking some bracket hopes out here. They took down super, how do you say it? Super dump bracket lings, and yeah. they took down SKK for third. So this team potentially uh, going to be, uh, you know, semis or, or beyond. We, we'll get to our picks later about it. Um, also, Pandemonium about Ottawa. Genevieve Labelle. 
Uh, I know as an avid listener of the podcast, so I'm just going to say her name because I know she's a, a big avid listener, has played. Uh, and a great player. Yeah, has played all over. So um, they're also going to Pauk. So um, this is a good tune up for them. Uh, they finished third at Frisbee Fest and they hold two wins over two CUC senior mixed teams in Quest and Harfang. So that's pretty hype. Uh, also, some other teams uh, potentially in their pool will be Rogue Hippo out of Edmonton. And old growth, they're listed from Interior BC. Can you specify what Interior BC is? Like, what is no. that? It could be like Nelson. It could be, I don't know, any anywhere. It's probably not the Kamloops Kelowna area. It would be probably a mashup from other places. But I would assume like Nelson because they have a little hotbed of Ultimate there. But not sure. Okay, well, there you go. There you have it. A notorious KWG. Um, this is a team that Danny might want to plug her ears on because uh, this team beat the U24 mix team at Tux, correct? Is that true? Our first ever game. Okay. Okay. But they do hold a win against a good team. So, hey, let's let's give some love to the KWGO here. Uh, they finished fifth at Tux and they defeated some senior mix teams at CUC and Local 613 and Danger Noodle. But uh, they have not beat one of those teams or senior mix teams since. Um so they've uh, had some more interesting results. Uh, Penguin Village out of Saskatoon. Love the name. Um, Allen. And the jerseys. They're always really oh, cool. Oh, wait. Is it the blue ones with like the orange penguin, right? That's their team, I assume. Yeah. And, and one year they had like a hoodie or something where you'd put it over your head and you'd, it would be like a penguin. Um, they, their merch is good. I don't know if they're doing that again, but they should. Hey, okay, well, there you go. Allen Stonehouse, not Stonehouse, because some people get that mixed up. Ali Turnquist as well. Some legends out here uh, for this Penguin Village side. Granny Smith out of Kelowna, hometown squad, trying to make some noise out here. And then Elder is a team that started last year out of Ottawa. They were sixth at MGM. Um, they have defeated Firefly, which is a team at this tournament. And then there is a pool that's already been determined. So uh, that is Pool D. Forever Young, um, I've never heard of them. I'm just kidding. Uh, they came... Did you did Forever Young tie for first or were they just given first? Or how did that work last year? Do you know? Because they got I think that they were tied. Yeah, because I don't the finals didn't get played, so I I kind of get it confused because I know TT and Forever Young both got like a medal that they like tied. Oh, TT I tied for third. For, TT tied for third with yes. Danger Noodle. So. so I'm not sure if I'm mixing up like the tying thing, but I think it was the same scenario. Well, either way, tie for first. Uh they do have uh I talked about them for cold losing these players, but now Daniel Bauer, who had 19 assists, four goals at Wilmot, is going to be on this forever young team. 11 assists, three goals at CUC last year in 2022. Um, and yours truly sitting across from me in the podcast, you're also playing for this team. So you'll be not making picks in this division, but uh, you're excited for the squad, right? You got your team does practice, from what I know. You have some pretty cool social media presence out here as well. Yeah, we have gone to, or they've gone to four tournaments total. I've been to two tournaments with them, Sun Flicker, Big Thirst. They did Disc Flicker and another tournament, I forget. And so, yeah, they've been they've been practicing once a week, sometimes on Sundays too. And it's, it's going to be a good team. Uh, they got Veronica Ng is also on the team, and she's really fast, great receiver i love throwing to her all the time when she's on the field i'm in my happy place so um this Van for vancouver for every young team should be good um i'm definitely curious how they're going to stack up against teams not from bc we played like against some calgary teams or sorry forever young has played against some calgary teams and stuff like that but um nothing nothing more east than that well they're gonna they're gonna take it on a team from my neck of the woods king barrow here um, Kyle Plum, Evelyn Lauren. There's a lot of names. Joel Yearsley, who's been playing forever. Um, and I was surprised by this. Is that big? Is that a big cat spotting on this team? Or is there different Andy Collins out here? Like, seriously? I don't know. I saw this and I, I know that him and Kyle Plum are, are like frenzies. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Andy's picking up with that team. Did Collins for... go to Queens? I don't know. Um, but he would have known because because Kyle's from like Kyle and Evelyn were from Vancouver Island, and so they were in like the BC scene back in the day. And so if Big Cat's playing, man, I think this team's stock just rose. If not like in the standings, definitely in like the vibes and fun times. Yeah, Katie Fizell also on this team. Um, so they they got some players out here. They finished ninth at Tux, uh, but they won MGM with two straight wins over Pandemonium's split squad. So they do have a title um, to hold on to here. 
Flams, Flames. I don't know my French. Flams on Rose. Flams on Rose out of Montreal. Uh, they got seventh at Frisbee Fest. They have a win over Harfang too. Um, second at CQU seven. And now Quebec Regionals place fourth, including a win over Quest. Um, you also have Wine Club. They bring the good vibes. Um, donuts on their jerseys. They're fun. Um, and then Firefly has a win at MGM as well. They're from Winnipeg. So we have talked about every mixed team. There are um, three pools. Is that right? That go right into semi-bracket for seeding. One pool is five. Um, yeah, this the the whole like playing one first game and then splitting into pools. I've never seen that before. Have you seen that? I have, and I, I understand why they do that. Just like the number of teams that there are and having some kind of geographic diversity to help kind of with seeding a little bit because a lot of these teams you don't really know. So they play like basically a seeding game. Isn't this kind of like the format that you want where if you win, you keep moving on to like a winner's bracket? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It could be like kind of similar to what, um, what's that? Oh, what's that type of, uh, uh, Swiss draw. It's kind of like Swiss draw kind of Swiss draw. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was so it's kind of like that, which I like, but, um, there is a, a pool of five where they play their four, four pool play games as per normal. And then the other three pools, they start with a kind of a crossover. Then they land into pools and play three games. Yeah. So uh, streaming schedule will depend on who wins the games, uh, like the pre, like the first game. So KWG or Penguin Village versus Granny Smith or Elder. And then there's also a game at 1030 on Saturday, B1 versus B2. That's kind of hype. And there, there's going to be no quarterfinal stream for mix. They'll have a final at three o'clock. Um, and then. There's like a crossover game happening uh, on Saturday. And then the quarters, ooh, tough. Quarter semis finals all on Sunday. Is that right? That's that's tough out here. Yeah, but what's cool is I believe the mixed final is when the other finals are already done. So, yeah, so it should it be last be, 3 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be hype, which we love. Yeah, I assume people aren't flying out immediately right after. So you should have a pretty sick atmosphere for the finals. Um, I'm going to make picks because Danny is not. So I'm going to pick my uh, semis uh, teams. Cold. I got happy campers out here. Uh, Yop and Forever Young. I have Forever Young taking down KWG in a very uh, contested uh, quarterfinal. Um, and then I have Cold versus Yop. And I'm, I'm riding with BC, it sounds like, this weekend because I'm picking Yop to win. I may have doubted them a little bit in the, the senior regionals, but I, I think they might get a win over Cold after Cold lost some of its BC players from from that Wilmux squad is all I'm saying <laughs> out here. So maybe BC going to get the good vibes. Sorry I didn't pick your team either, Danny. You know, it's tough. It's okay. I forgive you. I, I think, like, yeah, Yop, betting on Yop's a good play. Forever Young is obviously good. King Bear is good. Cold's good. Like, I, I think that there's going to be some close games, and I'm excited to recap it after it's all said and done. All right, mixed, done. That was kind of girthy. A much less girthy division, the open division. Surprisingly, the smallest division in this whole tournament with only six teams competing. So basically how it works is all the teams play each other and then the top two teams get a buy into semis while the others all play in. So the teams, we have Richard and Associates from Vancouver. So it's the evolved version of Richie and Friends. <laughs> And they have some pretty big names. Andre Galitz, we have Matt Doyle, Brendan Wong, Blair Underhill, John Norris, Joel, Joel Bellavance. Come on. That's all I have to say. And I just like picked some of the names. Yeah. Like literally every There's single more name names. is like yeah. Team Canada, whatever. They're, they're great. Uh, shout out to Matt Harvey, who I saw today. And I told him as I was doing my picks. Um, <laughs> that I was picking them to win. So that's a little spoiler for later. So we also have generic with an exclamation point at the end from Winnipeg. Got Cam Burden, Jordan Kovacs, Brad Davison, Kyle Parker, Tyler Shoshinov. Nailed it. I don't know. Nailed it. Nailed it. Ni nice. Jared Latowski. So uh, all ex general strike. They're going to be really good. We've got dead circus coming from Halifax. We've got Nick house in the house, captain and big developer of ultimate in Newfoundland. Saw them at jazz fest. They came seventh with a tough, Close quarters lost to out 11 10, big crossover win versus Hound. So, again, they're battle tested, which I think matters quite a bit. Tyler Smith, current RC. We got Martin, James, Gavin Gray, all played anchor. And we got Joel Beck from Spawn in 2023. So, their roster's looking pretty good. And in the fourth seed overall, I think these seedings maybe don't really matter because they're playing each other. So, don't read too much into yeah, them. Yeah, don't read into the seedings. Yeah. We got Ensom from Montreal. 
They placed third in 2022. They got Jean Lavey Champagne. We got LP Lazon, Andrew Portwine. On this team, we have Christian Parsons, an ex union player, Nathan Osman, 11 points in 2022 in CUCs, and Michael Morris with 10 points in 2022 CUCs as well. So it's not their full team that they just played USA Masters with. Um, and who knows whether having just played a full tournament will help them or hurt them. I think maybe at the Masters age, it might hurt them. Well, they, you never know. They don't have the full team. So like, I think that in some way, like they like there's different players that didn't play. Yeah, like they, they picked up some players, some fresh players. Yeah. Okay. That definitely would help. So but like not from Montreal, like won- poor wine does not live in Montreal. Right. Okay. So. Well, they also won Frisbee fast 10, eight over Quake. Early in the so season. They're doing, yeah. they're doing good. All right. Number five, Armada. I actually didn't even know this team existed. So it's from Vancouver. Ooh. They are led by Alan McFarlane and Michael Robertson, who was played uh, with me on Mastodon back in the day. So they should be, I don't really know what to expect from this team. Uh, I mean, Vancouver's usually pretty good at Frisbee, so we'll see. Then the number six seed, potentially seed, Carbon from Edmonton. They got Dave and Ty Huckhalter. So y- you know, I know that's not how you pronounce their names, but they play Frisbee, so they're definitely Huckhalters. And also they're big throwers, so they just need to relax. Luke Nielsen, a Neil in rather, also from Rumble. So when I look at these rosters, my limited knowledge of Masters Men's Ultimate, which actually I think is probably uh, it a lot like it's better actually than, pretty good, honestly. I would expect to see Ensom, Richard and Associates, Carbon, and Generic moving on to semis. I'm just going to move right into my picks. Yeah, do it, cool? do it, do it. Okay. So again, that's kind of what I would see as being the semi is we have... Richard and Associates versus Carbon, potentially, and then Ensom versus Generic. And then I see Richard and Associates versus Ensom in the finals with Richard and Associates taking down the whole thing. And I know that the, it seems like the easy pick to make based on the roster, because I look at this and I'm like, wow, so many like World Games and like Team Canada people that are awesome. A lot of these people haven't played a lot lately. <laughs> and they haven't really played tournaments. Like... They played a couple of games against Blackfish and they just played against Traffic last week. And so I don't know. It could be a risky pick because they haven't played like a full tournament. So They're shaking off the cobwebs. What, what do you me. think, Theo? Well, I have, I believe, the same uh, four. Um, I have Richard and Ensign playing in a semi and generic and dead circus. And I have Richard and Associates taking on generic with Richard and Associates winning. Um, and I'm, I think the final will be close, but some of these pool play games, I think they're going to be like quite big blowouts. And I also, uh, on record want to change one of my mixed semis picks. I realized I read what I picked wrong. So I'm really sorry. Happy campers. I am not picking you actually. I am very sorry. I'm picking King bear. So King bear, I'm actually picking you to be in the semi. So put that on the record when we do this next week, uh, for what I picked. That's all I'm saying. The people like that are listening to just the mixed portion and move on yeah. will be like, Theo, and you're like, actually, there was an amendment. Yeah, hey, I'm, so. I've, I've been told to put timestamps in. So if you've watched the last couple episodes on Spotify or um, YouTube, we're trying to be very specific with timestamps to make things a little bit easier uh, for you, for the listeners at home. I haven't figured out how to actually do the chapters in Spotify, the app itself, because uh, I have podcasts that do that, and I think it's awesome. So yeah. if you know how to do that, let us know. Um, Danny, and then do it for us. Yeah, do it for us. That would be helpful as well. But Danny, you saw this results document that some people have been working on, and that thing is hype. That's all I'm gonna say. Somehow we got to get it out to public. But come on. It's- okay, so it's like this master document of teams and all the games that they've played, and like there, there's an algorithm. There's even an algorithm. It's, <laughs> I don't know. It's how pretty accurate cool. It is, but so <laughs> there's an algorithm. I mean, it's pretty interesting to see. So I think that it's it's nice to have all of that information in one place. I've always wanted this. And I just, I swear I manifested it because I was thinking about it yesterday and you're like, check out this document. And I was like, what the heck? I was like, should we make this? And it was already made by people much smarter at that stuff than me. So yeah. it's very cool. Um, if anyone likes stats, maybe you should reach out and let us know that you want to take a peek sees at it. So yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. And you can do that via what avenue? Our social platforms out here. So we're yeah. flying down the road to, what is it, hashtag 3K, I think, on Instagram, something like that. So uh, yep. help us get there. Uh, Danny, any final thoughts on this uh, episode? You're going to be um, making the short trip to Kelowna to be playing Masters. So 
kind of cool. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday this year. Last year, I believe it was just two days. So yes, I know it's two games Friday, two to three on Saturday, and then two to three on Sunday. I think Masters vibe, players so. appreciate that. No, as a, speaking as a Masters yes. player myself. Yes, but what I do miss is having like the finals all on the last day, so everyone can go party on the night before. That I, I miss that. Mm, for that sure. will not happen, is what you're saying, because they'll be playing games, so yeah. they can't really do that. Yeah, I mean, they might still, depending upon where they are in the bracket, <laughs> but um, I definitely love me a good party, so I'm devastated. Is there a, t- is there a tournament fine. party, though? I know there's one at CUC that my team has been very hyped up about because it's 2000s themed, and we're like really excited for boy band stuff. Oh, Millennial. Yeah. Oh, that is fun. I didn't even know that. Yeah, 2000s, um, Y2K I'm sure theme. there is. Masters party hard, man. Like, Masters parties are my fave. I heard about the Wom- didn't, like... In Ireland, wasn't it some crazy stuff going on over there? You... We shall not speak of this, but yes, it was a good time had by all. What about the U24 party? I saw some clips of that. That seemed pretty hyped too. That was nice, actually. They rented out this whole club and it was just like U24 players. And it, there was like a whole dance floor, which was really cool. But then you go into the women's washroom and there was a separate dance floor with separate music, women only. What? And it was epic. So you go to the bathroom and then all of a sudden you just see all these women just like partying without like men looking at them hey hey <laughs> all us, i loved I it i could see that being a, i could see that being a better hit than the actual main dance floor is all i'm saying so you just it was you just dance with your friends and like kind of just hang yeah. out so yeah it was awesome so i'm trying to think of something that i could talk about in subscriber only well uh this is on the fly you're gonna talk about i could talk about something from u24 yeah I coaching danny's gonna talk about u24 coaching mixed as someone who just coached women's with uh ubc playing mostly women's but of course playing some masters mixed you're gonna give some yeah. insight into that in subscriber only that's how some we do mixed it specific stuff Ooh, that's how we do it on the fly out here i gotta go coach danny maybe eat before you uh do your subs only or something <laughs> and then uh we'll go from there but thank you again for tuning in appreciate all your support uh go say hi to danny uh at masters Tell her that yeah, Theo sent I'm you. I'm lonely. I like it when people say hi to me. Taylor, say hi too. Make sure Taylor, make sure you say hi. So <laughs> I'll be like, hi. <laughs> I got a show on the podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll warn him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, warn him, warn him. It. Okay, that's. I think that's telling us that we need to wrap this up. We're just rambling right now. Yeah, we're out of here. See you next week. Bye, everybody.